Good morning. Thank you. A very warm welcome to you and to this time of worship here at New Relief Church. We trust that whether you're here in the sanctuary with us or whether you're watching online, that you will share with us in the joy of being in the presence of our Lord God, listening to his word and bringing glory and honor to his name. It's hard to believe, but today is the first Sunday in Advent. I know, how excited are you? Yes, and to mark that, we're going to light our first Advent candle. Uh, I know, it really is exciting, and Anne and Rory are going to come up and do that. I thought it was a trick taper that doesn't go out. <laughs> We're going to do this on the four Sundays leading up to Christmas. Traditionally, the four candles represent hope, peace, love, and joy. And now that we have lit the candle, pray together. Dear God, as we begin our Advent pilgrimage, grant us the courage to hope hope for your presence, hope for your peace, and hope for your promise. Amen. You'll be surprised to learn that there are a number of intimations this morning. <laughs> Sadly, uh, the first few um, are not particularly pleasant. It's with sadness that we have to intimate the death of Martha Burgess of 92 Muir Drive, Martha's funeral will take place at Holmesford Bridge Crematorium at half past two on Thursday the 9th of December. And our thoughts and prayers, of course, are for her family and friends at this difficult time. It's with equal sadness that we intimate the death of Mr. Bill Adamson, an elder from the former Muir Church. Bill tended the church grounds here for over 15 years and founded the gardening group, which is still going strong today. Uh, we keep his wife, Margaret, and the family in our prayers too. The funeral service for Mrs. Betty Fulton will be this Friday, December the 3rd at 10.30 at Holmesford Bridge Crematorium. There's an online reflection this Wednesday at quarter past two, and the friendly hour meet in the West Road Hall at 2.30. Crossing Together is, is hosting a candlelit parade on Wednesday the 15th of December, and everyone is welcome. Younger folks, please remember that you need to bring an adult with you. The parade will leave Burtree Hill Library at 6.30 and follow a short, fairly accessible route up to Relief Church Halls. If you can't manage the walk, please meet us at the halls or wave as we pass. And on arrival at the halls, we will sing and then have some chocolate and treats. Um, crossing together is seeking volunteers to make and serve the hot chocolate uh, on the night. And if you can assist at the event, please contact Alison Muir or, or see Alison or Amanda Laird on a Sunday morning prior to the, the walk. Um, they'd also appreciate any donations of chocolate logs, mince pies, or small monetary offerings uh, to allow these items to be purchased for the event. Tea and Toast is on at the Relief Mission Centre on a Monday morning. Please feel free to drop in for a cuppa and a chat. Uh, a reminder that volunteers are required on Tuesday, Tuesday the 30th of November from 10 o'clock to help put up the Christmas decorations. The next Messy Church is being held in Relief Mission Centre. It's on Saturday the 11th of December 
uh, between 10 a.m. and noon. And this will be a joint messy church for Christmas. A reminder, too, about the bereavement service, which will be on on the afternoon of Sunday, the 5th of December at 2.30. If you are able, could you please email Morag at moragkcooper at yahoo.com with any intimations uh, by the Thursday of each week. We'll be holding our toy service on Sunday, the 12th of December, and the Kirk Session is kindly looking for the following donations, uh, toys for children, books for all ages, high street vouchers for teenagers, Christmas treats, selection boxes and sweets for all ages, and supermarket vouchers for parents and carers. All these will be given to North Ayrshire Council to distribute to the needy families. Uh, please note that any of the donated items should be new, unopened and unwrapped so that the council staff can determine the most suitable age group to receive the gift. Last year, over 750 of North Ayrshire's most vulnerable children received gifts thanks to the generosity of people like you. Uh, the walking group is on Wednesday the 1st of December at 9.30 in Boortree Hill Centre. And apparently, we're holding over November's quiz for one more week to give you an opportunity. Now, I have to tell you I'm disappointed because I burst my gut. <laughs> I really did. The hours I spent trying to fill that in for this morning. And if you're like me but didn't succeed, you've got one more week. So bring them in next week. And last, but by no means least, please join us. Enjoying the growing number of folks who are staying behind after the service, just for a wee 10 minutes for a cup of coffee over and some fellowship over a cup of coffee and tea and perhaps even a biscuit. Those are all the intimations. Let's begin our worship. Come, let us praise the Lord. Let us sing for joy to God who protects us. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and sing joyful songs of praise. So let's do that. Let's stand together and sing from Mission Praise number 729. We have come into his house. Number 729.
Let's join together in prayer. Let us pray. O oh, loving God, we rejoice in this season of good news and goodwill. We prepare to celebrate once more the birth of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, the Lord of Lords, the Word made flesh. For coming among us through Jesus and for living with us and sharing our humanity, for entering our world, loving God, we praise you. For the wonder of this special time with its message of love and forgiveness, its promise of peace and justice and the gift of life everlasting, we rejoice and praise your holy name. O sovereign God, we thank you for your word recorded in Scripture, a message passed down through the generations and discovered as we read or as we listen to it preached, as we share it in our times of fellowship and worship, as we see it in the beauty of our world and in the mysteries of life. Father, speak to us and give us ears to hear. Forgive us that we are sometimes slow to listen, that we allow the pressures and responsibilities of life, our interests, our, our pleasures and concerns to crowd you out. Forgive us when we become complacent in our worship, no longer expecting you to challenge us, no longer moved by a sense of awe and wonder at your presence no longer hungry for spiritual food. Forgive us for neglecting our friends, for turning in on ourselves and straying from your side. Open our hearts to your redeeming touch. Open our eyes to your amazing grace. Help us to turn away from our sins and to live more truly as your people. O oh, gracious God, encourage us to trust in you for all our needs. Help us to know your peace and comfort. Nurture in us a desire to stop, wait, and listen for your voice. And for the wonder of this coming season, its message of love and forgiveness, and the gift of life everlasting, loving God, we praise you. And so we come to you now, sharing again in the words of the one who came to save us, as we say together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory for ever. Amen. Good morning, my young friends. Are you coming up to join me on the red carpet? Come on up and have a seat. Don't look, don't look. Yes, you can see books, possibly, maybe. I want to think this morning about how God can speak to us. Yeah? How do we hear what God's saying? And to do that, I thought I'd bring some things with me, okay? And I want you to see if you can work out what these things are. So the first thing I brought... <laughs> don't look. The first thing I brought was this. Nope. A listening thing. It's a listening thing. Uh, a music thing. It begins with the letter I. Uh, it's an iPod. iPod. Now I thought an iPod was quite modern, but obviously not. But the thing you do with an iPod is you plug it in and you can listen to music and people talking. You can hear people telling stories. You can do lots of things with an iPod. Do any of you have an iPod? My brother has an iPod. 
Did your brother have an iPod? It's a long blue one. I know the type. It's, not it's, it's a bigger one than this. It's, not that, it's, not like it's this. like there. It's thinner and it's taller. Right. That's good. That's good to know. Will we ask if any of the older folks have an iPod? I used to have one. Did you used to have one? Yeah. I haven't used this in a long time. We could be here a while. So just, <laughs> right, let's see if any of the older folks, any of the older folks have an iPod. There's Hi. David has yeah. one. Karen has one. Anne has one. Oh, there's a few. There's a few, one up the back as well, but not many. That's, it's quite a modern way of listening to stories. Now what else? What else have I got here? What about this? CD. It's a CD. CD. Ah, no problems there. It's a CD. Now, what do you do with CDs? Yeah. You play them. You play them. And what can you hear on a CD? Music. Music. You can also hear people talking and telling stories. Has your brother got a CD? No, but... No? Oh, no. But I think he does some CDs. Right, okay, well, will we ask the older folks? Is that right? Will we ask the older folks if any of them have got a CD? Any of you have a CD? Oh, there's funny, there's a lot. There's a lot more have CDs than an iPod. How do you, 10? You think 10? Okay. What more? What more have I got here? What else? <gasps> <laughs> what is that? It's a, type of CD. it's a type of CD. Well, it's. Have you? You probably not seen one of these. It's called a tape. <laughs> have you seen one? You've you seen one? Do you know what you get on a tape? You can get a video. This is an audio tape. So all you hear on this one it's is music. music. People talking. Yes. Stories. Well done. You've <laughs> got the. He's got the script. You hear I people. Don't have a no, you do. It's just because you said all of those for the other person. I know. You're so clever. But will we look and see how many of the older folks have one of these? Oh yes. Even David's got one of them. There's a lot more of a CD. This is a bit older than, sorry, a tape. This is a tape, not a CD. A tape's a wee bit older than a CD. And that's a wee bit older than an iPod. What else do I have? <laughs> it's a record. That's Frank Sinatra. It's not mine. Right, I've got a record. Now, that, what do you, what do, you do with a record? You put in a record player. Yeah, and what do you hear on a record? Music, yes. people talking, and stories. Yes, you've got it. Now, here's an even older one. No, it's, it's still a record, but this record is from Holy Moly's. It's almost as old as, well, we'll not go there. It was 1954. That's just nearly 70 years old. That's a record. And my favorite one. This is a really small record. It's a disc. Can you read what it says on there? What does it say? The Wombles. The Wombles. Wombles. The Wombling Song. If you have a record player, you can borrow this if you wish. <laughs> right, will we see how many of the grown-ups? I bet my mama has one. Do you bet your mama has one? Let's see. Right, let's look and see how many of the older folk have a record player. Oh, still quite a few. How many of you have records? Hey! hey, hey. You. David doesn't have records. Oh, no. That's yeah, right. What's the point of I know, what is the point? But you can still buy record players now, apparently. Now, in older days, okay, when, when, how to say this, when these people were a little bit when they were like you, they would listen to records and you could hear people sing and talk and tell stories. When you're a bit younger, like me, <laughs> you would use a CD. No, in fact, you would use a tape. <laughs> then you would use a CD. 
then you would use an iPod. And if you're really smart, they all do the same thing, don't they? And if you're really smart nowadays, you can do it online or on your phone. Correct? That's right. Now, there's one other thing I brought with me that does the same thing. What might that be? What do you think? Oh. No. No. Even older than these things. A book. A book. Well done. I just grab. How many of you like Shakespeare? Do you like Shakespeare? Shakespeare wrote a lot of plays. A lot of plays. No. Well, I brought the complete works of Shakespeare with me this morning. There it is. William Shakespeare, the well, complete plays in one sitting. My grandma's one of those. Does she have one of those? Just like this one? It's, yeah, but um, it's another book. Ah, it's another book. I did bring another book. Uh, book. This is my wife's. How to tell if your cat is plotting to kill you. <laughs> you can borrow this any time you wish. Can I you can. The thing about the books and the records and the tape, they all do the same thing. The Bible. The Bible is another book, isn't it? And, you have, and it does the same thing. And it does the same thing. But you can't listen to music. You can't listen to music, but there are songs in the Bible. And there's still stories. There's still stories. So it always comes to the same thing except the book. And there endeth the lesson for this morning. <laughs> All of these do the same as the Bible. And if you want to know what God is saying to you, you don't need to listen to any of these. You just need a book. You just need the Bible. Well done. Okay, that was brilliant. You're so clever. Thank you very much for your help. Away back to your seat, and we're going to sing a song. A song that reminds us about some of the stories that we have from God particularly the story of Christmas and Jesus coming to us as a child and how we should celebrate that. So let's stand and sing from Mission Praise number 83. Come on and join the celebration.
is going to come up and read for us. Uh, the reading is page 74 of the New Testament on the Pew Bibles. That's Luke 1, verses 39 to 56. Mary visits Elizabeth. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favoured that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leapt for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. Mary's song. And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. For he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors. Mary stayed with Elizabeth for about three months and then returned home. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Let's praise God again as we stand together and sing from Mission Praise number 631, Tell Out My Soul, number 631.
Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, by the power of your presence, open the mind of God to us, that in your light we may see the light, and in your strength be strong. Amen. If you were to put together a list of all the Christmas songs that you can think of, I'm guessing that you would probably have quite a long list. I had a quick look online and I came up with my own list. It's a list of the top five most recorded Christmas songs. So, at number five, no, actually, we should do this properly. I think a list of the top five Christmas songs should be revealed the way they used to do it on the radio, on the top 40. Do you remember that on a Sunday evening? Do you remember the way, do they even do that anymore? I don't know. But they did the countdown. So I think we'll do it like that. So on my list, at number five, with 9,093 different versions, it's Joy to the World. Up from six to number four, with 9,524 versions, it's Winter Wonderland. Straight in at number three, with 14,521 versions, it's Jingle Bells. I know. And at number two, with 15,928 different versions, it's that old classic, White Christmas. But this year's number one, with a massive 19,041 different versions, it's Silent Night. Yes, well done. Good guess. Silent Night. Now, I know that wasn't quite the same as they do it on the BBC, but still, it's good to know that two of the top five most recorded Christmas songs are actually hymns. Because as you know, there are literally thousands of Christmas songs out there, especially if you want to include ones like Frosty the Snowman and All I Want for Christmas is My Two Front Teeth. But a new one to me, Grandma Got Run Over by a Reindeer. <laughs> I've not heard that one yet. Now, while some of these songs are just daft and a bit of a laugh, the more traditional Christmas hymns can be very powerful. Because some give us hope when we're feeling a bit discouraged. Some help us to renew our strength when we're beginning to grow weary. And of course, almost all Christmas hymns are simply expressions of joy and praise for what God has given us in Jesus. So I thought on this first Sunday of Advent, we could look back at one of the principal characters in Luke's account of the first Christmas, and that is Mary. And I thought we could reflect a little on the way she expressed her praise for God at this special time. And it is a special time. It's a happy time. I wonder if you've noticed how so many folks seem to be at their happiest at Christmas. Have you ever noticed that? Despite everything that's going on around them, they still manage to be full of Christmas cheer. It's like they haven't a care in the world, which is wonderful. Except, of course, if you're not feeling the same way. There's nothing worse when you're feeling a bit under the weather and everyone else is happy and full of Christmas cheer. And if you've ever felt like that, then today's passage is for you. Because on the face of it, the story of Mary is that of a young girl who had every reason to feel miserable and unhappy. Not only was she one of 
the poorest in her society. She was also young and she was also female, which at that time meant you were a second class citizen. You almost had no rights at all. She had no political voice. She had no power, no influence. And to make matters worse, if that was at all possible, she's pregnant and she has no husband. Now, although in some parts of the Western world today attitudes have changed, and for some reason it seems to have become an acceptable norm, but not in Mary's time. Not only was it unbelievably shameful to be unmarried and pregnant, Mary might very well have been stoned as a result. Now, she does have a fiancé, but he's been seriously thinking about calling the marriage off. So all in all, for Mary, not a lot to be cheerful about. Yet, despite all of this, despite everything that she could be sad and worried about, Luke tells us that Mary is so excited, she's so happy that she's moved to sing and to praise God for everything that he's been doing in her life. Now, why do you think that is? Why do you think that despite all of her serious problems and worries, Mary is still moved to sing praises to her God. Well, as Moira read for us earlier, in, in verses 46 to 47, we discover that for Mary, knowing God makes her happy. Knowing God, she, say, she says, makes her happy. So with happiness in mind, here's your first Christmas cracker joke of the year. What has four legs and one arm? A happy Rottweiler. I know, I know. Think about it. How bad was that? It is in keeping with Christmas cracker jokes. There are a lot of reasons why people are happy. For some, happiness is all about having lots of money. For others, it's about having a new house or a new car. Some folks are happy because they have a loving family. Some say that it's marriage that makes you happy. I can always tell when my wife Carolyn is happy because she skips around the house humming tunes out loud. She really does. Okay, well, maybe she doesn't quite skip around the house. But I can always tell when she's happy. So here's a question for us this morning. What makes you happy? What makes you joyful? Mary's reason was very clear, as Luke tells us in these verses. She's singing because knowing God makes her happy. She sings, my heart praises the Lord. My soul is glad because of God my Savior. And notice there that Mary says her heart is glad because of God my Savior. Her relationship with God is a personal one and it's real. She's not one of those folks who just has a lot of knowledge about God in her head. Her relationship with God is real and it's personal. Now Mary knows that she's a sinful person. She knows that she needs God. She understands that she needs her God as her Savior, just as we all do. So Mary sings about her relationship with God, and she does so because knowing God makes her happy. There are lots of things that make us happy and joyful. Although, of course, it's not difficult to be happy when things are going our way. But as you know, it's not always easy 
to be happy and joyful when things are not going our way. But Mary's song was the result of a much deeper joy. She was happy even though she didn't have any wealth. She sang for joy even when she seemed to be one of life's unfortunates. Mary found her joy in God. And that was something that could not be taken away by anyone or anything. It's this joy that is the reason Mary could sing her song of praise. And it's a joy that is also available to each and every one of us today, now, right this minute. It's happiness that doesn't depend on what's in your bank account. It's a joy that flows even through our tears and sadness. It's the joy that Jesus himself promises to anyone who will hear his word and believe in him. So friends, let me tell you this. Unless you find your joy and happiness in God, you will never be truly happy. And Mary finds her happiness in knowing God. But her song tells us that there are other reasons for her joy. And in verses 48 to 50, we see that for Mary, she recognizes that God has a special part for her in his plan. I think that two of the most important things that you can ever discover in life are these. Firstly, that God is working out a plan for the world. And secondly, you have a special part in that plan. God is working out a plan for the world all the time. He's in control. And you have a special part to play in that plan. Now, it seems that Mary found this out very early on. And so her song celebrates the huge part that God has for her in his plan. And her song celebrates just how excited she is to know this. Even though she and Joseph know the truth about her pregnancy, you can imagine that her story would be difficult for other people to swallow. But regardless of that, Mary is still glad to be chosen for this special part of God's plan. She can look beyond her own struggles and pain to see God's power and holiness. She can see beyond her troubles in the present to see her part in God's future plan. Mary sings for joy that such a great God not only notices this poor girl, but actually invites her to be part of his plan to save the world. We know, because we know the story, and I suspect that Mary probably realizes that what is going to happen will come at a cost to her. But still, she's able to see past her own difficulties, to see God's power and holiness, and that she is part of God's plan to save the world. Let me ask you this. Have you discovered your part in God's plan? Because for sure you do have a part. We all have a part to play in God's plan. But the thing is, friends, you need to find it. You have to find your place in God's plan. Rather than making up your own plan and then asking God to support it. Do you know what I mean? You know when sometimes we ask God to support us as we're just about to start something new. 
when actually the first thing we should have done was ask God if this is what he wants us to do. Friends, finding our place in God's plan is a recipe for joy. No matter what seems to be going on in the world around us, God is still working out his wonderful plan for the world. He's working on his plan to change the world. And just like he had with Mary, God really does have a part for you. He has a part for you to play in this plan. Will it cost you? Well, yes, it probably will. But then anything you do that makes a difference usually comes at a cost. Do you want your time to just slide on by? Or do you want your life to count for something? Mary gladly played her part in God's plan. And in some ways her song is calling you to find your part in God's plan too. But Mary's song is not quite finished there. In verses 51 to 55, at the end of her song, we see that Mary recognizes that God turns the world upside down and that God always keeps his promises. I think today many people misunderstand Christmas. I think they misunderstand Christmas because they misunderstand what God is actually doing. Jesus wasn't born to make us nicer people. He, be, he came to bring God's kingdom to a fallen world. He came to turn everything on its head. And Mary seems to understand this new way of thinking. She sees that God is pulling down the proud and lifting up the humble. He's turning the world of the proud and the humble upside down. In some ways, Mary's words remind us of the words Jesus himself will use later on in his ministry when he says, Blessed are you who hunger now, for you will be satisfied. And woe to you who are well fed now, for you will go hungry. God will turn the world upside down. The world just now tells us that to be successful people, we need to be powerful people. We need to put ourselves first. But you know, God says these people are losers. These people are the failures. The truly successful people in life are those who are humble and hungry. Hungry enough to be used by God. And Mary celebrates the fact that God's power can put this upside down world the right side up again. You'll probably remember that God once made a promise to Abraham. He said, all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. And throughout history, Israel has held on to God's promise. Though no doubt some wondered if he had forgotten it. But Mary, Mary sings about how God has remembered to show mercy to Abraham and all his descendants forever through Jesus. Mary believes that God will keep his promises. That God will not forget his people. And so she sings out loud. She sings out loud for everyone to hear that God will always keep his promises. So here's the thing. Here's the thing this morning. What makes you joyful? What makes you happy? What do you have to sing about this morning? 
I know that some of us are facing troubles and heartaches. And some of us will be stressed and tired and anxious. I appreciate that many of us will share a quiet sadness and pain at this time of year. But here's a song. A song from a young girl who had plenty of troubles and uncertainties. But she sang because God made her happy. She sang because she knew that she had a part to play in God's plan. She sang because God was turning the world upside down. And she sang because God always keeps his promises. Friends, is God speaking to you this morning? Is God speaking to you this morning? Are you hungry and thirsty to know him? Have you tried to find joy and happiness in other places? Well, if that's you, then why not come and find your joy in Jesus today? Why not bow before the Saviour who slept in a manger? The Saviour who died on a cross and rose from the grave and lives today and wants to put a song into your heart. A song that will never end. Let's pray. To God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, be glory and praise now and forevermore. Amen. Jesus put this song into our heart. Well, let's stand and sing again as we sing from Mission Praise number 376. Of you, yeah. Well, you did splendidly. Can I just remind you that our prayer tree is here, and I would encourage you, if you can, to fill out one of the cards and hang it on the tree. And as we pray this morning, we particularly want to remember those who have lost their lives, those who have lost loved ones 
in this past week, particularly those refugees um, who drowned in the English Channel. So let's pray together. Almighty God, all that we have comes from you. Our world full of beauty, our, our lives so richly blessed, our faith overflowing with joy. So we ask that you would receive now these gifts that we bring to you and teach us to use all that you've given us responsibly, generously, prayerfully and lovingly to the glory of your name. For loving God, we thank you for the love that you've given us in Christ, for the meaning and purpose, the joy and fulfillment you bring to us through him. Hear now our prayers for those who find it hard to hope, those for whom life is especially hard. We think of the hungry and the undernourished, the sick and the suffering, those caught in the middle of a COVID pandemic, the homeless, and the refugees, those driven to desperate measures, prepared to risk everything, including their life, to find peace and a better future in a foreign land. And we think of those women and men with families and friends deprived of their dignity as they struggle to survive, deprived of their life. Lord, reach out to them, reach out to their families in this time of need, and may the light of Christ break into their darkness. Father, we pray for those who feel overwhelmed by life, the lonely and the frightened, the the sad and weary, those who continue to worry about their safety, about their health, and the well-being of their family and their loved ones, worried about the pandemic and its consequences. We pray for those who dread what tomorrow will bring. O Lord God, may the message of love which Advent brings burst afresh into our world. May it bring to those who need it most the promise of help and healing. And may your light reach into the darkest places of our nation so that there may be hope rather than despair, that there may be joy instead of sorrow, love, not hatred. Bring to our world through Jesus Christ Good news to all. Release the captives. Give sight to the blind and freedom to the oppressed. And may we, as those who claim the name of Christ, play our part in showing his care and fulfilling his promise so that he might come once more this Christmas, bringing peace and love to all who have lost hope. Lord, you call us to respond to their need. So help us now to reach out in love through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the Word made flesh. Amen. Love came down at Christmas. Let's stand and sing for mission praise number 451. Love came down at Christmas.
the peace of God surround you. May the love of God flow from you and the strength of God protect you. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest and remain with each one of you this day and forevermore.